Okay, it is weak computer. So you're going to learn a lot more about acid base reactions um, in part two, like a lot, especially about the equilibrium. Uh, let me see. Precipitation to this acid base right here. All right, let me pull this up right quick so you can just give just to give you a visual of weak acids and strong acids, and then we're gonna move on and start talking about uh, oxidation and reduction. One of the things that we talked about was with acids and bases, <clears throat> we talked about weak acids dissociating only partially and strong acids dissociating fully. <laughs> so this is a, an example of a, uh, so we have water and then two water molecules. And though that can even, you can show that interacting with each other as one of the waters acting as a base and pulling off a proton from uh, the other water, giving you H3O plus and then OH minus. So then when you do a strong acid, HA, you can see where the acid is here, right? But most of that acid, in, when you put it in a solution, is broken up because the water has, you see how you have H2O here, but over here, when, when you put that acid in solution, it's H3O plus the conjugate base of the acid. So any, any acid that's really strong, this is what it's gonna look like. If you dissolve it up in water, or you, if you add it to water and dilute it, uh, it's gonna look like this, where you have the conjugate base here, and then you have the proton from the acid being transferred to water, to give you uh, H3O plus. And then by the same token, you got a weak, weak acid. This is what it looks like. Notice this is the acid HA. You can see that there are more, there's more HA than there is <clears throat> H3O. What that means is that this acid has not transferred this proton to water because water is acting as a base in this case. It hasn't transferred this proton to water. And so there's a lot of that acid left. So when we think about equilibrium, right, this is a case where the equilibrium arrow, you see how much HA is left? That means that the equilibrium is gonna lie to this side towards HA. The, the, the more this disappears, like with the strong acid, the more this disappears, that means the equilibrium is gonna lie more towards the product side, right? Where you have the conjugate base plus the hydronium ion. And you can see the pH, we haven't talked about that. We'll talk about it later, but the pH is two and that's really acidic. Uh, for a pH is zero to 14, seven is neutral. I know I'm sure you learned that in, in your high school class. Seven is neutral, zero to six is acidic. The closer you are to zero, the more acidic it is. So you can see that this has a pH of two. And then if we go to the weak acid, you're gonna see the pH is gonna be much different right, 4.5, that's a huge difference. That's a huge difference, uh, huge difference, right? So it's still acidic, but it's not as acidic as the, as the strong acid. And what pH is measuring is how much uh, H plus you have, or how, what's the concentration of uh, H plus is in solution, right? And you'll see the same thing for uh, strong bases, Right, this is a strong base. It's going to ionize into its components, right? Because a base is nothing more than a salt, a hydroxide salt. So it's going to ionize into its two components. And it's, if it's a weak base, it's not going to ionize. When you, you dissolve that up in water, it's, it's only going to ionize partially. So that's what you see here, right? These little BH molecules, that's the base 
having pulled off a proton from water to give you a hydroxide and then whatever the conjugate acid is of that base, right? And then you'll see the pH is nine and a half. So that's over seven. So anything above seven is considered basic. All right. Any questions about that? I just wanted to kind of help you see this in a visual sense about acids and bases and proton transfer and all that. So I'm going to go back to my iPad. And then we're going to talk about now uh, redox, oxidation and reduction. All right. So we've talked about different classes of reactions. We've talked about precipitation reactions, acid-base reactions, and now we're gonna introduce another type of reaction, which is what we call a redox reaction. Right, so this is the, the this part is reduction, and then this part is oxidation. Right, so that there are a lot of different types of uh, redox reactions, and um, you can think of oxidation and reduction in multiple different ways, right? There's a lot of different ways to think about it. One way to think about uh, oxidation and reduction is the loss or gain of electrons. I think we talked about that when we were looking at, uh, we were first doing naming and talking about oxidation numbers and plus two and plus three <laughs> and the different oxidation numbers for the different groups on the periodic table. So for reduction, right? And I wanna think about, think about this in terms of, let's say we have uh, some element or some ion, uh, Z, and it has, uh, well, let me, let me not do that yet. All right, so reduction is the, gain of electrons. That's the gain of electrons. You can also uh, think about this as um, decreasing the oxidation number. So if we have an element, or not, I keep saying element, we have an ion Z and it's got a plus five charge. And then Z goes from plus five to plus three, right? What you notice is that the number, the oxidation number has actually gone down. And the only way to do that, to lower the charge, if it's positive, is to add electrons. So it'll be, uh, this will be, you can really write this as Z plus five plus two electrons. Will, will equal Z plus three, because by nature, by the uh, charge on the electron is negative, right? We learned that already. So if I add two electrons to Z plus five, then I'm gonna get Z plus three, because it's gonna be basically five minus two, because the charge on the electron is minus one. So the reduction is can be thought of as the, the gain of electrons, the decrease of the oxidation number, which we're gonna talk about oxidation number also in a second, but there's, a, there's another definition for reduction, which it won't apply to this class, but you'll learn it when we get to organic, and that is increasing the, the uh, number of bonds to hydrogen, right? That, the hydrogen atom. So, but you don't have to write that in your notes because we're going to talk about that when we get to organic. All right. And then oxidation, which is the flip side of this uh, equation. is the loss of electrons.
right? So loss of electrons or increasing. Increasing the oxidation rate. Right, so so oxidation is kind of the flip side of reduction. So let's say if I had Z plus three, right, it's gonna be plus three, right? And I took away two electrons. That's gonna oxidize that up to Z plus five. Because if I take two electrons away, that have a negative one charge, that's gonna increase that charge from plus three to plus five. Does that make sense? Are y'all following that? So loss of electrons is oxidation. Gaining electrons is reduction. Decreasing the, oxida the oxidation number is reduction. And increasing the oxidation number is oxidation. Right, so anytime your charge goes up, if it's positive and it goes up, then you have oxidized that atom or that ion. Anytime, anytime your charge goes down, you have reduced uh, that ion. All right. All right. Let's look at an example, one example, uh, just to kind of go through the different terms that are, that are related to uh, oxidation and reduction. So we're going to take um, this reaction. So solid, solid sodium plus chlorine gas. Now you can actually do this reaction in a beaker. Take a piece of sodium, shave it off, put it into a, well, not maybe not a beaker, but a flask. If you seal it up, put it into a flask, seal it, and then pipe in the chlorine gas so you can do this reaction. Is this balanced? Uh-oh, I think I gave it away. It's not balanced, is it? No. No. What would you do? Put a two in front of the um, sodium on the left side, and then a two in front of um, sodium chloride. Look at you. Who was that? Let me see. Let me, let me Alexis. Get your flowers. Nice work. You're trying to get some more lunch money. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, but you're right. That now is balanced. And what, what you're going to find out <laughs> with these redox reactions is that balancing them is sometimes a, a, a real chore, especially if it's like a single displacement reaction. But with everything, there's a, to everything, there's a process. So we're going to learn a process for balancing these things. And it's not, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's doable, right? So a lot of times what, what, what happens in these reactions, because this is the overall reaction, but a lot of times when you write your redox reactions, you write them as what we call half reactions. And in the half reactions, that's where you see where the reduction takes place and where the oxidation takes place. So in this case, we're gonna say of uh, one and a half reactions is gonna be sodium solid, and that's, there's a two there, going to two sodium ions. So two Na plus ion. Now, how do we get to Na plus? We just showed that up top. What do I need to do to a metal like sodium to make its charge positive? Do I give it electrons or do I take electrons away from it?
if I go from zero to plus one and an electron has a minus one charge, what have I done? Have I taken electrons away or have I given electrons? Give it. Okay, think about it. Electrons are negative. No, you take it away. Take it away. If, if, if uh, electrons are negative and if I take the electrons away, that's gonna make whatever I take it from more positive, right? So for this, I've taken away an electron, but since I have two sodiums that I'm doing that to, I'm gonna write that over here as plus two electrons, right? I don't show it as minus two electrons on the other side. I just put, once I oxidize this and I lose those electrons, it's the oxidized ions plus the electrons that got lost. So you don't show it as Na, two Na minus two electrons. You, you show it as the two ions that you generated plus the electrons that got lost. So that's, that's one of the half reactions. And the other half reaction in this case is like you show it as Cl2 going to two Cl minus, right? So the top part is, this is the oxidation part. That's the oxidation part, all right? And it's oxidation because it gave up Sodium gave up two electrons, right? And then in, in the bottom step, <clears throat> right, we act, this is actually reduction. And let me show this part too, because we need to see that as well. So it'll be this plus two electrons. Right? Think about it. Let's think about that. So I have two chlorines on that other side <laughs> and the char the overall charge on that chlorine molecule is zero. And now on the right side of the arrow, I have two chlorines ions, both have a minus one charge. So that's, if you add those up, the total charge is minus two. So I, that means that that chlorine gained two electrons. So each one of those chlorines in that pair gained an electron to give it a negative one charge. And so that is an example of reduction. And what you'll find out with these redox reactions is that the electrons on the redu reduction side and the oxidation side, once you balance them, you can usually get rid of them, right? That, the, the process for, for balancing a redox uh, equation is pretty lengthy, but when you what, what you'll find out is that once you balance everything, there's certain things you can get rid of, and then you're left with that overall net uh, equation, right? So this is this is the reduction. So when we think about this, now let, this is this may sound confusing. Hopefully it doesn't. So this is the so the sodium since it gives up electrons for chlorine to take, we say that sodium is a reducing agent, right? Because sodium gives electrons away to other atoms, in this case, chlorine, so that it can get reduced. So this is reducing agent, right? And then since chlorine is the, is the, was accepting the electrons from sodium, helping sodium to get oxidized, we call the chlorine part oxidizing agent, right? So chlorine is getting reduced and in the process is helping sodium to get oxidized. Sodium is getting oxidized and in the process is helping chlorine to get reduced by giving it those electrons. Does that make sense? So that's what's happening in any given uh, redox reaction. <clears throat>
you have something that's getting reduced, you have something that's getting oxidized, and they kind of help each other. What the thing that's getting oxidized and giving up electrons gives those electrons to the things that's trying to the thing that is trying to get reduced. And the thing by that's getting reduced by accepting the electrons is helping the thing that's getting oxidized get oxidized. All right. So it's kind of like a, a, a codependent type of re, uh, relationship between those. All right. So some this is one way to express a redox reaction. There are a lot of different ways to express um, redox, redox reactions. Let me show you another way. We got, yeah, we got time, we got time. Because sometimes, let me put this here. So that's the first example. Let me show you another example where it's not so obvious that electrons are being transferred like that. All right, so let's say you have let's say you have H2 and this is a gas plus Cl2 gas in parentheses, but it's kind of suspect. Let me fix that. But my, that little L is kind of suspect too. All right. And this is going to go to 2HCl, which is also a gas. Very nasty gas, by the way. You don't want to inhale that. That HCl is horrible. All right. So we don't know what's giving up electrons, what's accepting electrons, because both of these are nonmetals. <laughs> and so in this case, we need to check the oxidation number. And it helps to check oxidation numbers anyway. You got the example that we go through, the big example, we probably won't get to it until Monday, but the big example we go through for redox, you're going to see that one of the ways to not get tripped up on one of the, on the, one of the major steps is to check the oxidation numbers. Uh, but here we got to check. check the oxidation numbers, right? And we're gonna find out based by checking the oxidation numbers, which element got reduced and then which element got oxidized, right? So what is the oxidation number? And that, that simply is the, It's the expected charge if the element was an ion, right? So it's what you expect the charge to be on an element if it was actually on it. And some, some of this we've kind of talked about already. Like we kind of know group one is got plus one, group two is plus two, then you got the transition metals which can have different oxidation numbers. But then when we started at uh, boron, which was plus three, uh, and then we go with the carbon, which was minus four, nitrogen minus three, oxygen minus two, and then the chlorine, the halogens are minus one. So we kind of already touched this, but we haven't applied it to this particular situation uh, yet. All right. So there's some, some rules to assigning these oxidation numbers. I hate to write all this stuff down because it's, it's a lot, but we're going to go through it. And then we're going to do some examples and then we'll be done. Right, so first, the first rule I should have just pasted this in from the book. I actually still can, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna cheat like that. Right, so, so the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. One is very simple. If it's elemental, meaning that it's not shown written as an ion, if it's just written as an element, the charge is zero. All 
right? So the, the, if we go back to that top example, we could, we assume we can assume that the charge on hydrogen and the charge on chlorine is zero because they're both in their elemental state, right? Um, the second rule is that if it's a monatomic ion, Right, the charge is what the charge is. Like in, in the case of uh, sodium plus, right? Which we just, we, we would give that an oxidation of number of plus one. So whatever the charge of the ion is, if it's monatomic, we just say that it is what it is. So we have sodium plus, if we have uh, nitrogen minus three, then we, that's what, that's what the charge is. All right, if it's monatomic. Uh, the third rule, which is this is getting tedious. Uh, if it's a, these are, and these are for non metals, right? So for hydrogen, the charge is plus one if it's with a non metal. And minus one. With a metal. This is actually what we call what we would call a hydride. And this would be a proton. <clears throat> All right, so the charge, the well, not the charge, but the oxidation number on hydrogen. If it's a, with a metal, is minus one. If it's with a non-metal, it's plus one. If it's oxygen, normally it's minus two. Uh, it can also be minus one or it can be one half. For the most part, okay, so let me, let me give you when it's non-elemental, like if it was here in a CO2 molecule or something like that, is going to be minus two. If it's elemental, like if it's just O2 as a part, as one of your reactants, it's going to be minus one, right? So as a part of a molecule, we give it a minus two charge as a part of a uh, as it as a reactant in its elemental state, which a lot of redox, redox reactions use oxygen as one of the reactants, then it's going to be minus one. That's is very rarely um, one half, right? Very some very rare cases. If it's with fluorine, uh, it'll have a minus one half charge. All right. So that's what, something to think about when, we, when we're looking at these other redox reactions as well. Uh, for halogens, that's all, all group seven atoms, which is chlorine, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, and that group seven uh, is minus one. Right. So minus one for fluorine, that's always the case. Uh, all your other halogens are minus one. Yeah, a couple of exceptions. Um, and that's when they when the other halogens combined with oxygen. Then the oxidation number can be positive. Right, I was working through an example last night, prepping for today, and it actually 
uh, there was a chlorine that had uh, a plus five charge, right? And then the last rule, we're gonna stop. I thought we'd get to an, an, another example, but we'll stop here. Is the sum Right, so the sum of the oxidation numbers for all the atoms is equal to the charge on that molecule or atom. So if you have a polyatomic and it has a negative three charge, all your oxidation numbers that make up that polyatomic have to add up to that charge. And we're gonna see why that's important because when you're trying to calculate oxidation numbers, then you need to know that. All right, we're going to stop here. Uh, I'm going to do that this weekend, uh, Sion. Did you get my message? All right, we're going to stop. Here. Yes, I did. Um, <clears throat> I'm at work right now, unfortunately, but I will be able to play for y'all next week for sure. You, you don't carry around a little tiny Casio keyboard with you everywhere you go? I mean, what's really going on? What is this, 2022? I mean, I wish I could afford one. <laughs> I wish joking. I could. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. All right, so we'll get it, we'll get it Monday. Maybe. Is that right? No, you're going to get it for sure next week. Okay, all right, cool. All right, we're going to stop here. Uh, to answer that question, um, I'm going to work on grading uh, the exams this weekend. I just need some, some time. Go ahead, uh, Amaya.